As a child, as far as I was concerned, my dad had an amazing job and we had all the money we needed. My life was so fun and carefree that I never realized that we weren't rich until I met someone rich. Still, I've never met a rich kid who grew up as happy as I did. When I started going to New York City to do comedy and later on when I moved to LA to do Mad TV, I met plenty of people who grew up wealthy. These people came from families that had several homes, a staff of servants, and took vacations in beautiful, exotic locations all around the world. My family had one house, and my sister Stacy and I had a maid. We called her Ma. When we vacationed, there wasn't much of a debate between Fiji and Bora Bora. We relaxed strictly at the Jersey Shore. When I encountered rich people for the first time, I discovered that not only do they holiday in places that are hard to find on a map, they also use the names of the seasons as verbs. When they asked me, where did you summer and winter growing up, I would usually say, as a child, the same place I springed and autumned. Rich people know how to relax. That's all they do growing up, relax. I wish my mother knew how to relax because now I have the money to let her take it easy. I wish she liked tennis or golf maybe skiing or world travel. Unfortunately, she doesn't. My mother likes cleaning tables with pledge. If I'm ever blessed with a child, I'm gonna encourage that child to take it slow. I'd like to see someone in my family fucking relax, even if it's 30 years from now. As I mentioned earlier, our family's favorite destination down the shore was Wildwood Crest, New Jersey. We'd head out there for the last two weeks of every summer and check into the Crusader Motel. And sure, it was only a motel, but it was right on the beach. While my mother and sister sat on the sand, my father and I would play baseball for what seemed like all day. As a kid, I was obsessed with baseball, and not much has changed since then. Like a lot of fathers and sons, my dad and I bonded over baseball more than anything else. Since my father spent his days climbing roofs and installing antennas, he was in great shape which made it easier for him to keep up with an 11-year-old boy out on the baseball field all day long. We would start out playing catch, then he'd hit me grounders. After that, he'd usually follow up by hitting screaming line drives for me to chase down and that sort of stuff. Eventually, he'd work up to what he'd call the scorchers, which were shots he'd just slam into the field as hard as he could. Then he would pitch me batting practice for about an hour. He was the coolest ever, my old man. I'd hit balls all over the field, and he would go shag them down. Finally, if you can believe it, he'd come back in from the outfield and hit me fly balls, which he'd call skyers for another hour or so. My father was a really good athlete, so his pop-ups really were sky high. Eventually, I learned how to judge them properly and catch them well. It was great training for when I started to play on teams, which I did all through school. My dad and I were constantly in search of a perfect surface where we could get good hops. A lot of the time we would end up on private golf courses where he'd hit me grounders on one of the greens. That was hilarious. Let me tell you, the hops we'd get on these well-groomed putting greens were amazing, but it was definitely challenging, mostly because I was in charge of watching out for cops coming to arrest us. My father was a real inner city guy, so he had no concept that what we were doing was just so obviously wrong. He saw it as creating a slight inconvenience to the golfers. Before he'd start hitting me balls, he'd tell me to look out for, as he put it, the golf fags. I'd like to make my father laugh whenever I could, and during our practice, I usually succeeded by doing play-by-play -play sportscasting as I ran around catching fly balls. Playing baseball with him was great, but being able to make him laugh was the best. It put me on top of the world. Those moments were when I first realized the power you can have over people if you are able to make them laugh. If something pissed my father off, like usually me, I realized that I could get out of trouble if I could make him laugh when I fessed up to my crime. He'd always encourage me, too. Driving back from the ballpark in his truck with the ladder between us resting on the dash, he'd say, Sport, if you don't make it in the majors, you'll probably have a career as a comedian. My dad's encouragement is definitely why those were the only two things I've ever wanted to do with my life. I never went through a period where I wanted to be a doctor, a cop, or even a rock star. All I wanted to do was play shortstop for the Yankees from the time I was about five. Then I turned 15 and realized how silly that was and just gave up on it. And let's face it, that's the luckiest break Derek Jeter ever got. <laughs>